Hey everybody, this is Nojo from Thranda Design and in partnership with Just Flight. Today we're doing a tutorial video for the Thrust Modulation System, or TMS. Let's get to it. So here we are in the first officer's seat of the BAE-146, and if we just look down into the left of the flight instruments, we have the Thrust Modulation System, or TMS, panel. We can also bring up a 2D pop-up of this panel by going to the side menu and clicking TMS, close that for now. So the thrust modulation system provides us two main functions. First, it helps us quickly set the desired engine power for the current phase of flight, and it synchronizes all four engines together so they're each providing the same thrust or they're at the same limit. And we can see here, even with all four thrust levers equally down at the idle stop, we still have some variation in the N1 values from engine to engine, and same with the temperature. So the TMS will help us synchronize that. On the TMS panel itself, we have a digital display that will show N1, N2, or temperature, depending on the mode, a temperature reference selector that will let us select the temperature it's used in the takeoff calculations, a number of buttons that indicate each of the engines and the modes available to us. We have a TGT, or turbine gas temperature, reference temperature for the TGT mode, and we finally, uh, we have a test button and also a dimmer knob which will, let's take a look at this, which will dim the digital display up here. And if we go up above here by the uh, master warning system control panel, we have this dimmer knob. When it's all the way up, we're in daytime mode, so the backlighting of the labels is off. But as we decrease it, below about three quarters, we can see the backlighting turns on. This is the night mode. And now as we decrease it further, it will dim those backlighting. Now the top row of buttons represents each engine, one, two, three, and four. And within each of these, there's a blue up arrow and a white down arrow. And here, let me initiate the self-test. We can see those illuminate. There we go. The blue up arrow indicates the pilot needs to push the engine's thrust lever forward to reach the range in which the TMS actuators have authority over the throttle. They can only have a, a limited range of authority. And the white down arrow, probably as you guessed, means you need to reduce thrust to get within that range. So now that the self-test is completed, let's take a look at each of the modes in order. So the first mode is TO, or takeoff mode. This is used for setting the takeoff thrust. It uses the T-REF selector in the upper right corner. Here we can set the ambient temperature, and the TMS will automatically display the N1% setting for takeoff at our current altitude for this selected temperature, in this case 93.7% N1. The ambient temperature can be read from the OAT gauge just below and to the right of the TMS. Manually setting the T-REF selection to a value higher than the ambient temperature, like let's say 25 degrees, will allow us to use a flex or reduce thrust takeoff. This is primarily used to reduce wear and tear on the engines over time. Takeoff thrust is limited to 5 minutes. Now you may have noticed when I engage takeoff mode, our uh, engine N1 values increased, and these blue lights came on. What happened is, even though the thrust levers are still at the idle stop, the actuators started moving the throttles forward to try to reach 93.7% N1. However, they reached their maximum, the, the actuators reached their maximum forward limit, and so now the TMS is telling me, with these blue arrows, that I need to move the thrust levers forward. So if I move those forward sufficiently, I'm just going to keep pushing those up, Pretty soon, oh, we're going to get a takeoff config warning because I have the parking brake on. We'll just ignore that for now. But as we get close to 93.7%, there, we can see some of these arrows are starting to turn off. Uh, the outer engines, there we go, just a little bit more. So now the TMS will maintain 93.7. Once we exceed 75 knots on the airspeed, the TMS actuators will freeze in place until a new mode is selected. The next mode is MCT, or Maximum Continuous Thrust Mode. This mode will command the engines to their maximum continuous thrust, which can be maintained indefinitely. This is defined as 857 degrees TGT, which will be displayed uh, here in the digital window, and you can read the TGT here. Just like with takeoff mode, the actuators have started pushing the throttles up to try to reach 857, but they hit their limit, so the blue lights will come on. This mode may be used when a maximum performance climb is desired, although a normal climb is based on N1 and uses a lower setting. Now very similar to MCT is TGT mode. 
Instead of always being 857, this mode is selectable via the selectors down here, uh, but otherwise it works the same. Descent mode here works a little bit differently from the other modes. It only provides a minimum engine speed to make sure the core N2 speed, red here, of the engines is high enough to maintain pressurization and anti-icing requirements. Normally this mode ensures a minimum of 60% N2 seen here, but it will increase to 63 if any of these surface DI switches are selected on, and it will increase to 67 if any of the engine anti-ice switches is selected on. And finally, we have sync or synchronize mode. This mode reads the current setting of the master engine and syncs all other engines to be equal to that master engine. The control button toggles between using N1 or N2 as the control data, and you can see the digital display gives a live update of, in this case, N2 for the master engine or N1 for the master engine. The master button switches between using engine number one or engine number two as the master. So, for example, I'm going to reset our uh, actuators here. Let's say we're going to use engine one as the master. So let me set a, a good normal climb setting, about 88% to start. That'll be a good initial climb from sea level. And once we get there, I'm just looking at N1, or engine number one for now, 88%. There we go, close enough, 88.2. We can see, because of that natural variation across the engines, they're not all the same value. So, we're going to use sync mode. Power's on, synchronize, you can use engine 1 as the master, and N1 as the control data, and we can see the TMS will now automatically synchronize all the engines to the same value. And as I increase the throttle, this is showing the N1 value of engine 1, that increases, and sync mode will keep the others, other engines in line with it. This mode is commonly used during climb or cruise to ensure all engines are synced together. And finally, once we're done, the TMS should be selected off before landing by pressing the power button. That will recenter all of the actuators and allow the engines to have uh, just direct manual control from the pilot. So I hope you enjoyed that look at the thrust modulation system or TMS in the BAE 146. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video.